And we are live. Welcome to episode 156 of Beastly Thoughts Live, now available on iTunes and Podbean for your listening pleasure at your finer podcast sources. Yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. Others Yo, are available. You know what I found out today? This is episode 156 of Beastly Thoughts Live. If you divide that by three, that's 52 that means that this is our third year anniversary. Like, if if you just look at it, like, per episode, like, imagine if we had done an episode every week, this would yeah. be the, the three year, year anniversary of Beast of Thoughts Live. Well, oh, I'll wait. take that. Awesome. Right? Happy, happy anniversary. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That's the leather anniversary. <laughs> Man. <It> feels like. <laughs> what? I don't know about you guys, but it feels like I've been going for about six weeks, not three years, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, time what flies when you're having fun. Yeah, having fun. time. Those three years have gone by, and they felt like six weeks to you, Gary. Don't worry about it. You, you know, don't look. You, you don't look any older either, Gary. It's amazing, man. In, in all honesty, it's amazing how much the show has changed over the last three years. Right? Started off. We used to. We've said this before, but we used to record the show with an Elgato off of a Skype chat Xbox. on an Xbox. Yeah. Uh, at one point, we had I think six hosts, maybe yeah. seven. Too yeah. many. Downsized, then we added Gary. You know, like it's been, it's been a kind of a roller coaster ride, but a fun one. I, I can't honestly say that I've not enjoyed every podcast that we've done. So, hey, totally, me too. Congratulations on three years. You know, thank you, man. That's a very special thing, and for me, it's the same yeah. way, Briar. It does feel like some crazy roller coaster, but you know, it's one of those rides you don't regret. We've met lots of people, learned lots of things, and had some pretty in- incredible experiences. Uh, doing beastly thoughts for the last three years, and I look forward to the next seven. To me, that ten is going to be right. That's ten a years. Spot. That's the yeah. big one. What What is the ten year anniversary gift? Uh, a divorce. <laughs> Over. <laughs> so, I don't, my wife has to tell me every year. <laughs> the first one I know is paper. The second one was wait, maybe the second one was paper, and the third yeah, one is leather. I don't know because I just had my third anniversary, as did Beastly. Mm-hmm. Well, I just had my eight. My oh. eight. I'm yes. sorry, my bad. Five year marriage, <laughs> eight year anniversary. We got married on the same day that we met. <laughs> <laughs> Three years later, okay? <laughs> yeah, that seems not wrong at all. Uh huh. Crazy, crazy night in Vegas for Beasley. That was it. Jeez. <laughs> he doesn't even remember what happened, probably. It's just like, I woke up the next day and I was married to this girl. I just... Yeah. <laughs> we went down there and we saw there was the That's guy. why you He's quit eight. drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> standing over here too. Holy crap! What a night. God so, guys, I got a ton of shit I want to talk about, like a, a metric ton. Uh, but I want to hear what you guys been up to for the last week because I've been incommunicado. I've been out of town and not not in communication with you guys. So, Robbie, what have you been up to for the last week? Uh, personally, as a lot of you probably know, Briar, being the awesome, nice friend he is, sent me a brand new video card for my PC. Thank you again, Briar, because I've been playing it like crazy. I can already see improvements in things like Skype. I can already see the call is much easier. It's much easier to multitask. The main difference I've noticed, though, is that I can play a lot of games on this PC that I was never able to play before. It's an amazing feeling, man, being able to max out a game, you know, at ultra settings and get 60 frames or higher. It really is an amazing feeling. And I've been playing a lot of PC games this week. I've been playing Far Cry 3, a game I really enjoyed and wanted to get back into. I really love that game. It's just such a fun open world game. Briar, I know you never even played Far Cry 4. (laughs) (laughs) One day you'll get into it. Man, those games are a lot of fun and I've been enjoying them a lot. Another game I've been playing is Metro Last Light, which is... Personally, I love the Metro series, and I think it is very highly underrated. It has such a cool, like, just post-apocalyptic setting, and there's sort of a sci-fi element with the Dark Ones, and the story is just really fascinating where it goes. been loving that. How's the that final running? Thing... So the card I sent you was an RX 480. How's that yep, running on that? Because it's, you know, it's it's no, it's no not a high-end card. It's a, it's a it's new, mid-range newish card. Now. Yeah, it's a mid-range card. Yep. So in Metro Last Light, even though it's a somewhat older game at this point, very still, demanding. Yeah, still, still demanding. demanding game. So how's it running on that thing? I'm running at ultra settings, 1080p at 60 frames nice. per second, like wow. no frame rate drops. That's good to know. I, yeah, I, I think those uh, RX cards they've they've been replaced now with the 580 and the 570. I think so. Yes. 
Yeah, but that that card it runs it ran pretty good. I think I'm blown it's, away because it's like a three hundred dollar video card too, and it gives you a lot of performance. Like it's amazing. It really is for the value you get with it. It's awesome. I think there's a common misconception with video cards that if you've not on a 10 series GeForce, then you may as well throw your PC away because it's garbage. And I think that, you know, that that's the trap a lot of people fall into around the cost of PC gaming. Right, like the next video card comes out, it's like, oh, I want this upgrade, I want to get this. Is it yeah. really necessary, though? No, not all the time. Definitely. Well, it sucks for people like me who use laptops. I don't have a desktop, so I only have the graphics card that came with this mid-range laptop. There's no future for me. <laughs> You know, oh, I, don't say that. <laughs> for reasons I'll explain later, I've been thinking a lot about kind of what kind of like doing sort of a PC build guide for the future of like you know kind of like a low low end and mid range and a high end and like kind of what those things cost and what you can expect performance wise out of them because it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately and just yep. putting that into a video form for Destiny because we know Destiny Two is obviously coming on PC. I thought it would be kind of worthwhile because you can actually get a pretty damn good desktop PC for about the price that you would pay for uh, a PS4 Pro or an Xbox Scorpio, assuming that Scorpio is going to be five or five or around $500. Totally. Especially if you build it yourself, you know, you do a lot of research online, you can get a really good computer for $500, $700 in that range. You can really be smart about it and mm -hmm. build something awesome. Very wow. cool. Gary, what oh, have you I been just, up to? Oh, I'm sorry, Beasley, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to go next. Um, I bought and downloaded and played Player Unknown's Battlegrounds yes. last week. Oh, baby, yes. there we go. Talk to me, I, Beasley. I don't know what the hell I'm doing for it. But <laughs> I jumped out, out of the plane. I was like, wow, I'm falling to the ground. And I pulled out my, my parachute, and I just saw some guy running towards me. He ran into a house. Yeah. And I looked out the window and got shot. I was like, yeah. holy crap. You know, it's kind of a scary situation. I want somebody to play with. Okay. And being that I don't have a lot of people I, I play with on, on PC, I had to wait for you to get back. I, I think you went on some kind of pilgrimage or something. Mm -hmm. So I was waiting for you Mecca. to come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see you getting down now. But yeah. Uh, I was waiting for you to come back so that we could actually spend some time playing that. But uh, this, the, the remainder of the week, from I think Wednesday on, I've been working on new content and a new show on my YouTube channel called The Chat with Beasley. Mm -hmm. And it's really not video game focused. It's more, it can be really any topic, but usually it falls away from the video game uh, centered direction my channel has been going. And the video I'm working on right now actually asks the question is if whether or not Russia hacked the 2016 presidential election. And I go into mm -hmm. detail, bring a lot of facts. And uh, I think this video is going to be amazing. I I'm very proud of the work that I'm doing here. I've been doing editing all day. I edited Friday. I edited all day yesterday. And I was editing up until about 4.30 today. And that's just on part one. It's a two-part video. And I'm going to start doing things like this once a week uh, because I want to interject more of my own personal thought process into my YouTube channel rather than regurgitate the video game news that everybody knows. I want to bring a part of me that's important to me and be able to share that with people who follow me on YouTube. So that's the big question on the chat with Beastly. This is the second episode. Made some new intros and outros for it. I'm very proud of that. I saw and, those uh, on Twitter. It was a cool yeah, intro. I like that a lot. It's going to work out really well. But that's the question um, I'm asking this week. Do you guys think that Russia hacked the 2016 election, and that's what we're going to get into uh, on my next video. I look awesome. forward to the, reading all the hate in your comments. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a lot of – it's definitely a hot topic for sure, but people love personality and definitely from you know people on the internet and showing a real personality and giving an opinion to stuff. That's, that's really good though, if you, especially if you put time and thought into it. <laughs> I should work for National Geographic. But yeah, the haters, so, just be ready for it. Oh, man. It's Gary, what have you been up to this week? Me, uh, similar similar to Robbie, I guess. Uh, I've been rediscovering my PC roots. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm playing PC quite a lot anyway, but for me, I, it's a game that I, or a series that I haven't played in a long time. I, I played it for maybe an hour, way back when it was released seven years ago, and this is Final Fantasy XIII, the Lightning Trilogy. So I know that BC, being a, a real Final Fantasy fan, will have a strong opinion on this particular franchise, but... Uh, I guess I really align to what Robbie said that for me sometimes just the power that a PC can bring graphically to a franchise can sometimes reinvigorate that franchise for you. It's and magical make you to me. Go. That's how I'd describe it. So for me, Lightning Trilogy or Final Fantasy 13 on the PlayStation 3, 
at 30 frames in 720p, I've got zero interest of going back and playing. But at 60 frames 4K with ultra textures and 16 times anisotropic filtering, mm. it's <laughs> stunning. And it's really added something to the otherwise bland sort of linear levels. You know, there's such rich environments now. Just by adding that immersion has really enriched and, and brought that game forward to me. And I guess speaking, forgetting Final Fantasy for a moment, speaking more broadly around that, I think it illustrates how the PC can be a platform that can take games that can be played anywhere else and really give them a, a unique home that, that you can't find on a comparable comparable platform. But yeah, I mean, I'm planning to go through the entire trilogy uh, and give a, a view once I complete it, so I don't want to drip feed this through. But so far, I'm about 25 hours into 13.1. And I am really enjoying it, despite a lot of criticisms that has been about the game it being linear, being a departure from the franchise. I feel that it's in the same way that Zelda takes a different direction with every game it has. So Wind Waker, Majora's mm -hmm. Mask, Breath of the Wild. I feel like Final Fantasy, after 10, started doing that themselves. So 12, 13, um, 14 obviously being online and 15. Now, each one has been its own spin on the RPG. And for all its faults, I'm having a great time and I'm going to see it through and play the, the full three. So that's been my short and sweet summary of the week. Nice. Sweet. Uh, another game that kind of is seeing that new renaissance on PC is Bayonetta 1 as well, Gary. I don't know if you've played the original Bayonetta on Xbox 360 or PS3, but they recently re-released it on PC. And it has all the new bells and whistles can run at much higher resolution, 60 frames per second, unlocked frame rate. It looks fantastic, and a lot of people have been enjoying that. Kind of in a similar vein to you in Final Fantasy 13. So PC is where you go if you know how to play it. But if you got these big hands, it's a really hard thing to do. Well, I'm I'm playing Final Fantasy 13 on an Xbox One controller. So it connects in. I've got the same experience that I'd have on, an, on I guess, an Xbox 360, because uh, you can't play it on the One. But I've got all the the glory that comes with uh, you know the, the 4k hardware that can support oh no it, so. don't say a glorious pc <laughs> that's gonna really rile up the comments don't, don't worry go any further with that it's fine. we we can't hear the peasants from the top of our pc castles it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry don't you can worry. see the console peasants crying from below but you just can't hear them you may it's think right. that gary is just joking and being ironic but he fucking means it no <laughs> it's fine. Look, when I see them starving and crying at the gates, I'll occasionally flick them a teraflop from the, uh, the you know, <laughs> the side of the country. Here's a teraflop. Here's a teraflop. Te here's yeah. a teraflop. Be gone. Here's Be six gone. of them. Go build yourself a Project Scorpio. There you go. And experience <laughs> half of what PC gaming can offer. That's great. Jo Jokes right. aside, I actually, I'm picking up a 1080 Ti this week, but Ooh, that's something else. I, I just know, played something on a 1080 Ti that looked good. <laughs> I wonder what that game was. Tell me more. Bro. Tell me more. Right, so, guys. Brian, what have you been playing this week? I played Destiny 2 this week. Everybody knows that. I'm, you know, I don't want to like tease it any. I went. We. I got invited out to LA. I flew out to LA uh, to the Destiny 2 reveal event. Uh, obviously, I'm a huge Destiny fanboy. So, any discussion we have about Destiny, what? you know, I'm, you know, like, obviously has to include that knowledge. Um, they had two versions for us to play. Uh, they had the PS4 Pro version, and they had the PC version available for us to play. And guys, I gotta say, I am more hyped for Destiny 2 now mm. than I was going into that reveal. I don't know if you guys got to, a mm. chance to actually see the reveal uh, that Budgie put on. The show they put on was pretty amazing. It was, they, was they showed really, off, really well done. Yeah, they showed off the first uh, campaign level, or early campaign level, um, where you actually... Uh, the tower is attacked by the Cabal. The tower is like that main social area that you're probably familiar with. Uh, mm -hmm. It gets attacked by the Cabal. Uh, you fight alongside Zavala, one of the you know the main characters of Destiny. Uh, he's actually popping a Titan bubble for you to get protected in. You move out of like that main area of the of the tower, and you see Ikora Ray uh, come and do a Nova bomb and like wipe out a bunch of enemies. It's very exciting. You finally. You go through this big black door that has been this mysterious black door for the last three years. You finally get through there. Uh, you meet Gary for the first time. You meet uh, ah, Paul, there like is. the main the main antagonist of Destiny Two, uh, and you know then the demo ends. Uh, we also got to play a strike, um, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I was amazed by the strike. 
I'm not a big fan of Destiny Strikes. Uh, part of it is because I've played them so many times, and it just feels very repetitive to me. You just go in there, and it's like paint by numbers. You know, just shoot Agreed. by numbers in the strikes. <laughs> The first time playing it, obviously, that was a new experience. But what I was really shocked by was the visual fidelity that was going on on the PS4 Pro and on the and on the PC. Uh, but also the scale of the environments was something that we've never seen in Destiny before. There were mm. huge environments that we we're fighting in with huge. There's this one scene where there's this big mining machine with like these huge arms that kind of stretch out with like these rotors on them. And it's going through and like scraping the earth. And you've got to like jump between these rotors. Like they're just gigantic. And if you get hit by them, one, obviously you die. And our first time Pretty through, much. we got yeah. team wiped <laughs> because we all, <laughs> we didn't see these things coming. You know, like we didn't know how to react. We didn't know how to get away from them. Uh, so all of a sudden, you know, they just come and they crushed us. Uh, there's like a jumping puzzle inside of the strike. There was a boss fight that was brand new, had nearly raid-like mechanics so it's simplified raid, raid pretty like much looked mechanics. like atheon it was really cool it was similar it was you know it was definitely vex uh and then we got to play pvp they've revamped pvp it's all 4v4 now so it's there's no more 6v6 there's no more 3 3v3 <laughs> um we got to play around with the new subclasses um the gunslinger has been revamped the striker titan has been revamped and we got to play with a new warlock subclass the it's called the Dawnbreaker. I keep Dawnbringer. Yeah, with Dawn the sword. Uh, which was su super fun. Anybody who is familiar with warlocks in uh, Destiny will see that they are. The jump has been adjusted to make it a little bit more manageable. Less also, floaty. There's a. It's still floaty, but it's it feels more predictable. It feels more like a jump in a video game than kind of this floatiness. There's also this new yep. mantle mechanic. So like. You know those times where you just barely miss a jump of the warlock and you float oh. to your slow and ine inevitable doom? Uh, now you can just grab a ledge and kind of pull yourself up, awesome. which is really nice. Um, we got to play with new weapons. Uh, we didn't get a chance to inspect those weapons, so we we know a little bit about the weapons. There are three exotics in there. There's a bunch of legendaries. They feel good. The shooting, the best news is the shooting still feels like Destiny. So the best part of Destiny to me was the act of firing a gun was in in itself intrinsically fun and that's moving forward in destiny 2 the periphery though a lot of that stuff's changing 4v4 it, it was like a counter-strike style of match that they were putting on where you had two different sites that you had to basically arm a bomb on and you had an attacking team and a defending team um the new abilities made gunfights a lot different there's a the time to kill in general is a lot slower now in, in PVE or PVP. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely, there's more of an emphasis on gunfights and headshots. Um, the equipment, Skill. like that. yeah, the equipment like grenades and supers seemed weaker than what we're used to in destiny one. You see, uh, I've really. heard that comment quite a few times, bro, about the time to kills being slower. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know what weapons you guys were using, so you don't know if those weapons were poor archetypes. They obviously didn't have their perks unlocked. So it's like taking, you know, a generic gun, and let's say an, even a strong gun like the A's Luna, or let's say a hand cannon, not the A's Luna, but the, the faster rate of fire hand cannons, and then putting one of those unupgraded in the Guardian's hand and saying, see what that feels like. Possibly, yeah. You know, and it's going to feel slower. So it, I think yeah. it could be partly down to that, that that absolutely could be gary and obviously this was an early build things could change by the time we get the beta and by the time we get the full game uh all i can speak of is what we actually got our hands on right and i, I can't even really uh speak to what it'll feel like when we get the beta it could be completely different but things like grenades not killing in one shot you know if you get a if you stick yeah. a grenade to an enemy it doesn't necessarily kill them with huh? one grenade yeah, it took three melee hits to get a kill in the Crucible. That's uh, as really opposed, interesting. Yeah, as opposed to two. So uh, supers, depending on the range at which you are, you may get hit by a super, but you might not necessarily die from that super. Depending on the super. Um, so so far, from what we've played, it seems there's less emphasis on your abilities more emphasis on weapons they've also changed the archetypes of weapons a little bit so now there's going to be two primary slots one is kinetic and one is uh like an energy-based weapon 
Uh, those two slots are basically the same, aside from the fact that one has elemental damage and one has just kinetic. So you yep. can have hand cannons, auto rifles, pulse rifles, scout rifles, uh, and submachine guns in both of those slots. So it makes it really easy to customize your character, your loadout for mm -hmm. the kind of engagements you're expecting, or just be a, a jack of all trades. Have a submachine gun for close range, and like a scout rifle for long range, or a hand cannon. Love for close that idea. Range. You know, like so you can mix that up. Anything that can one shot kill a guardian is now a power weapon, and goes where you would expect heavy weapons to be in Destiny 1. So okay. that includes sniper rifles, shotguns, grenade launchers, rocket launchers, you know, all of that stuff that can, that the really damaging stuff uh, now is a power weapon and goes in that power weapon slot, which means that at the beginning of a match, you got to select, do I want to be a sniper or do I want to get rocket launchers? You know, like, how do I want to play this out? Super interesting. And then when mm. you get you get that power weapon ammo, it used to be that, you know, this chest pops up, everybody huddles around this chest, and the whole team gets that heavy ammo, right? Mm. Now, you go to, like, a kiosk on the wall, you pop open that kiosk, and one person gets that power weapon ammo. What? Yeah, so just one person. And when you get it, there's an alert on the screen for everybody in that match that would say, if I just got it, it would say, Briar Rabbit just got uh, sniper rifle ammo near the shops. Right, so it calls yeah. out what you got and where you and got. Where it. you are, what? So, how yeah. do you feel that's going to work in uh, public games, Brian? So I know there's only four v four, so there is going to yeah. be less of a cluster like group around. But let's say three of your team decide they want that power box, and you're not communicating on mics. You've got three people spamming Square or X on Xbox trying to pick that thing up. Do you think that's going to lead to frustration in in the sense that it's kind of whoever's connection is quickest that's going to get the power ammo? It may, it may. Um, one thing that I noticed during the build we played is that this stuff is kind of, it's common. It's easy to find right. and it spawns pretty frequently. So if you see a guy standing next to one, I would suggest just move on and pick up the next one, you know, as opposed to just everybody trying to get the thing. Obviously, a team that is playing together and has comms and is coordinating yeah. this kind of stuff is going to have a lot of success up against a team that's all huddled around one of these things trying to... <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a big change for the way the Crucible works. It's it's a big change for the way PVE works, too, because now you're not going to have the ability to have a sniper rifle and a rocket launcher. Mm. You're going to have to pick. Um, I guess thematically going right the way back to the first thing you said, and I, I kind of wanted you to, to go on because you seemed, you know, when I, when you talk about it, it makes me excited to want to play it. You know, you talk about it with such yeah. passion and enthusiasm. It's, you know, it's really infectious. But uh, first thing you said around the the, re the reveal uh, and Bungie showing the destruction of the tower. If I recall, the first thing they showed wasn't the destruction of the tower, but the almost prologue or backstory of Zavala yeah, rising that was as a cool. guardian. So to me, that was one of the most powerful things they showed because that struck me coming fresh out of Logan as almost like a Wolverine-esque thing. This guy just keeps getting hit and keeps getting knocked down, but just keeps getting back up and fighting. And the Guardians felt like the superheroes of the Destiny universe, you know, to the to the Amanda, young Amanda, building the tower, you know, protecting. And these guys are getting, you know, like Rocky Balboa, you know, they're not just immortal fighters. These are getting killed. These people are dying day in, day out, and they're dying for the people of the last city. And that was really powerful. You know, I've never had that sort of emotional connection to a guy that gives me bounties once a week. You know, it just really struck home. I mean, did you guys feel that when you were watching it? Did that come across? Yeah, it certainly did. It, it, it you know, what it felt like was for the first time having an, like you said, an emotional attachment to a character in Destiny, which we've had very infrequently in in this game so far. Um, so if this is the kind of thing we can expect out of Destiny Two storytelling, you know, I'm very enthusiastic about it because. Seeing him just get knocked down, it, it gave him, it gave you a sense of who this person is, like in his struggle, like leading up to this point, and it built kind of an ethos around him, like a, a mystique around him that was very powerful. And then later on, when you're fighting next to him, it just added to the epicness of fighting next to this guy that you'd seen, you know what he's been through. It it's very powerful. It was very powerful storytelling. I thought. Yeah, I mean, that really struck me. And the other thing that I, th I think we've seen 
lobbied around. And I think, basically, you might want to chime in on this as well, because you covered it in one of your um, excellent commentaries this week, was around the theme of expansion versus sequel. Because I know there's been a lot of people that have said, this kind of feels like a DLC. And uh, I'm going to qualify that statement by saying the people that have said it might not necessarily have been to the event that you went to, Briar. So, uh, BC, do you have anything to add on that? And then, Briar, would you like to summarise, I guess, what you felt from the event? Well, I, I, I'll add to it. I did make a video on the reaction that I had upon seeing the reveal. I thought that the reveal was done very well. I, I thought that my expectations deceived me because Destiny 1, you know, the, the idea that you can't take your weapons and your armor into Destiny 2 would kind of lead, uh, lend credence to the, the thought that the game would be very, very different. Uh, that the, maybe the character models would look different or the types of weapons or, or even the UI and the way that the game actually looks would be different. And upon seeing the game, it looked it looked great. You know, they showed slow kind of slow motion scenes of the Guardians. You could see that, you know, the high quality textures and it looked like, you know, it looked like Destiny. But to me, it looked very similar to what we've seen so far. And of course, I, I wasn't there, Briar. I wasn't able to play what you played. I saw what they allowed the public to see. But to me my initial impression was, ah, it looks very, very similar. And I'm not one of the people who actually said that it looks like an expansion, but I do understand people saying that. Lots of people said it in my comments. Lots of people said it on the reveal trailer. That, oh, man, this is just another DLC. It looks exactly the same. And some people were just, you know, adding that it looks the same. They changed some of the super moves. The Nova Bomb looks different. Now there's three swipes. They could have done that, you know, on Destiny 1. And for someone who, I guess, who wasn't there, that does kind of linger in the back of your mind. Is this more of the same? Now, I do agree. I saw kind of the story aspect of the game. That really hit home for me because like both of you, I, I didn't see any of that in, in the original Destiny. So to me, that actually made the game matter a lot more that there's going to be meaningful connections to some of these characters and possibly they'd be moving forward with a story in that ilk. But graphically, I, I, I'm, I'm curious how you feel, Briar. You were actually there. You played it on the PS4 Pro. I hear that it's native 4K. 30 frames per second on the PS4 Pro. I don't know that it's Pro. native 4K. Well, it, they are... It, it's, it, yeah, it's we don't know that. You know, it's definitely... It was on a 4K monitor. Uh, you know, it might be rendering at a lower resolution than getting upscaled to 4K. I suspect it probably is, uh, just because of the power level of the hardware. But to address the Destiny 1.5 or Destiny 1.7, not Destiny 2, it is a sequel to Destiny. So, of course, it's going to look like Destiny, right? Like... Halo 2 looks like Halo, right? There are differences, though, in the game that make you feel like it's a sequel. Having an entirely new set of weapons, entirely new set of levels to explore, an entirely new format for the Crucible, uh, just playing the strike. The strike is... It's something of a scale that was just never achieved in Destiny. Okay, just the the scope of the level, how big the environment felt, how big the like I keep referring to this like drill thing. I wish I knew the name of the thing, but like it was gigantic. It was it was epic in scale, right? And this is just part of this this strike. It's probably part of a patrol area because my suspicion is this strike was running us through, you know, partially a patrol hey, area patrol. and then into you know, like a strike-specific zone. Of course it looks like Destiny. It is Destiny. I mean, it's Destiny 2. I you mean, know, Brian, what, um, what other console game? I, I, I'm trying to rack my head there as well, because I, I guess coming from... The, the PC community are interested in this game now, I guess, as a result of Destiny 2 coming to PC. So they're looking at it with PC eyes. And World of Warcraft, I think, is is where the parallels keep getting drawn. And people keep saying... World of Warcraft expansions delivered what Destiny 2 is delivering as a sequel. And I would agree they did. But I think it's also worth tempering that statement by saying that World of Warcraft is a $15 a month game with a huge amount of development team behind it mm -hmm. and is a P PC game, not a console game. I don't know of any other, and, and I don't know if anyone else here can chime in, do you know of any other console game that has had an expansion not a sequel, but an expansion with the scope and scale that Destiny 2 is looking to deliver. I can't but I can't anything off the top of my head. No. So I don't, I don't know where these comments are being 
grounded in what what basis people are making that statement on i'm just trying to you know, you know. we saw an expansion with the taking king that really revamped the game this is far more expansive than that this is this is a new game the engine is highly modified the the engine the game is running on is highly modified. It has not been developed with the Xbox 360 and the PS3 in mind. And you can tell that graphically there are huge improvements. And see, um, that's what I, want, I wanted to ask you about. See, I watched some of the videos. I wasn't able to watch all of them. But actually yeah. being there and seeing it in person, there's no... I'm, I'm guessing for you, it's really... You can tell that this has nothing to do with the seventh generation. It's a, a full push forward. Does it look very similar? Or, or if you had them both side by side, would you be able to tell? It still looks that like Destiny. Destiny. It still looks yeah, like but, Destiny. Yeah. But uh, like in the tower, you can tell by all of the particle effects and just okay. the, the flyer and like the ships flying around and these these cabal are landing in these orbs and like so much is happening and it feels so dynamic and so gotcha. so full of like just. It's almost information overload in that first section. There's so much going on. It can be a little bit hard to figure out what Process. the fuck am I supposed to be doing here? <laughs> um, oh. And then as you move on, you're seeing Nova bombs from other characters. You're seeing ships landing and leaving. You're it, there's just, it feels like there's a lot more detail in, yeah. in, in the level, the levels feel more expansive and it feels and like there's dynamically just more stuff happening. To me, that alone, at least now, you've laid it completely to rest for me. And this is what I think people are, are seeing and why they're connecting Destiny 2 with Destiny 1 and saying that it's more of an, you know, an upgrade or a DLC. People still equate the PS3 and the, the PS3, I mean, the Xbox 360 versions with Destiny 1. Mm -hmm. And so when they think of Destiny 1 on PS4 or Xbox One, they're still somehow tying those two together rather than understanding that the, the eight generation consoles were drastically improved over the the seventh generation and so people and mentally you're saying okay this has to be a whole nother generation past destiny one because destiny one was on xbox 360 and xbox one so this is going to be completely different and so that's why i said my expectations deceived me because i was thinking like that too i was thinking well this is strictly for the ps4 strictly for the xbox one it's going to be completely different because the last uh yeah. destiny one was kind of held back by the seventh generation even though they've really pushed it forward on the, the eighth generation consoles. And I think a lot of people are getting confused by that sentiment, that mentality. I, I also don't think it, it comes through in a video. Watching somebody else's video of a playthrough of this game, especially the strike, I keep coming back to that strike because it feels so much bigger than anything we saw in Destiny 1. Wow. The environment you're in, yep. it just feels bigger. There's more stuff in it, and there's more transitions. Like... Going from kind of this flat open area to this cliffside and to this area with the big drill and then into this, you know, into where the boss is. Even the boss is in a huge arena. Vertically, it's gigantic. And you use that play space in, in kind of interesting ways. Uh, the way the boss actually transitions from stage to stage. It is destiny. It's, it's destiny, yeah. though. So, you know, it's. To me, it feels a lot like Assassin's Creed. You know, Assassin's Creed, it had a lot to like, and it had a lot that was clearly missing. And Assassin's Creed 2 took a lot of the good things about Assassin's Creed and evolved on them. And Assassin's Creed 2, it was more Assassin's Creed. But it was it, a better game overall, yeah. Yeah, I've only like. played a small portion of Destiny 2. But what I've played is significantly better than what I played in Destiny 1. <laughs> Sweet. And let's not forget as well that with Destiny, unlike Assassin's Creed and other games which people are referring it to, Destiny is a living game. It is a social game. We've seen iteration and evolution of the game over a three-year period. You should really be comparing Destiny 2 to Destiny 1 September 2014 when it released. <laughs> that should be the comparison. That you make <laughs> Good point. Mm. You are now looking at Destiny with three years of development cycle behind it and an expansion and multiple free updates. If you look at Destiny yeah. 2, three years in, with expansions and updates and everything else there. What's you're that going to be a, like? Yeah, you're going to have a much meatier size proposition. Wow. So you're looking at the game at the end of its life cycle versus a social living game at the start of its life cycle. There's obviously going to be, this is almost like the handshake between, you know, passing the baton in a relay race. 
You know, this guy's mm-hmm. run out of steam. He's passed it at that point, And this is where their intersections end. And this guy's going to accelerate off yeah. from that starting point. And I think yeah. that's a fair way to view it. You that's talk a about the social view, aspect, yeah. too, is that they've, they're introducing a new system for playing with people. So they, they talked about a stat where 50% of the people who hit max light level in Destiny never went on and did a raid or never went on and did Trials of Osiris. So they introduced a new matchmaking system that allows clans who have, let's say, four or five people and they want to do a raid, they need one or two more people. In-game, they're going to be able to enter like this kind of queue system and then single people, single players who maybe you know they don't have a, a clan or their clan's not on, but they want to do a raid or they want to do Trials of Osiris or a Nightfall or something, can go into this queue and they, as a single person, you get the option of seeing the clans, right? A clan pops up on your screen. They say it gives a description of the clan. And then it basically says it allows the clan to say, you know, we're into hardcore PVP. You know, we we don't fuck around here. It's all business all the time. And you could say, eh, that doesn't sound like the kind of group I want to play with. So you say, nope, let's check the next one out. Maybe this awesome. one says we're hardcore PVE. We raid every day. We're trying to get through this raid in 20 minutes or less. Eh, that, again, that doesn't sound like me. And the next one comes up and said, we're, we're into PVE. We try and have a good time, and we have a relaxed attitude. We like to laugh a lot. Oh, that sounds like the kind of group I want to do a raid with. You click accept. You do a raid with these guys. Uh, you know, It's not like a pure LFG. It's kind of like this curated LFG. And it's in the game as opposed to having to go and do this yeah. on the internet. It's so, so smart, though. It That's really awesome. does sound amazing. That's what Destiny 1 always needed, Briar. It was so cumbersome to find a group to do raids and things with. Yeah, I right. just didn't like the way that was, that whole that thing was. That was awesome. Talking yeah. about connected communities and, I guess, stronger communities together, what do we think about the filthy elitist PC master race coming in and ruining Destiny 2 for us all? <laughs> all right, so here's the deal. 30 frames per second on the on the consoles, unlimited frame rate on the PC. The yeah. way this event was set up is after the presentation, we walked into a room that had PS4 Pros set up at kiosks. Um, they had story missions set up, PvP set up, and then the strike set up. So you could just basically go and play the game. Then mm-hmm. in a smaller room off to the side, they had PC set up in a similar manner. Uh, immediately upon entering that room, me, Pope Bear, and Tefty Teft jumped into a strike together and played through that strike, and we were blown away. It was amazing. On PC? No, on on PS4 Pros. Okay. Uh, on 4K monitors, you know, it looked amazing. It really, I mean, it was we were blown away. But halfway through the strike, we all kind of move our headphones off to the side and say, "This isn't running at 60 frames per second, guys." <laughs> like this is still 30 frames per second. That's one of the biggest hopes that we had for for Destiny 2. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed the strike. That was a bit of a disappointment. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So we walked out, we finished the strike, we walked away from the PS4 Pros and somebody said the PCs are over there. Have you seen the PCs yet? So we Ooh. walk over to the PCs. Immediately <laughs> upon entering the room that the PCs are in, there's about 10 people <laughs> Standing slack jawed, like holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> well. I'm not gonna lie, it looks phenomenal. It looks wow. good on a PS4 Pro. It looks great on it a is PS4 on medium Pro. settings, from what we heard too. Yeah, it looks great on a PS4 Pro. It's definitely a step up from Destiny. Mm-hmm. These PCs they had were high end PCs. They were 7700Ks, brand new Intel processors, brand new Intel i7 processors, water cooled. With yep. brand new GTX 1080 Ti graphics cards in them, oh these things my God. were hot rod PCs running Destiny 2 at 60 frames per second plus. Okay. On G-Sync monitors, 4K G-Sync monitors. These are probably fifteen hundred dollar monitors. Mm. <sighs> okay. Holy God. It looked stunning. <laughs> wow. And then we found out it was running at medium settings. That's unreal. Imagine like ultra yeah. settings, 4K, 60. So, oh god, 
12, so 12. the medium medium settings on a high end PC just outshine the PS4 Pro. Yeah, but just part like of that. that is part of that's native 4K though. Let's let's be fair. Even if the yeah, PlayStation yeah, the 4 is there... claiming to run native 4K, there's a big difference between PC 4K and PS4 Pro 4K. There's when a big difference. A lot of a lot of the time, even though the PlayStation 4 Pro is outputting 4K, it's actually the resolution is running natively at a lower resolution, right? Checker checkerboard rendering. Yeah, it yeah. could be doing checkerboard rendering or even running at 1080p and upscaling to 4K. Uh, there's all sorts of things that they call 4K that aren't necessarily 4K. It's 4K. It, it looked yeah. great. It looked great. I'm not saying it doesn't look great on a PS4 Pro. I'm not saying it's not worth buying on a PS4 Pro. I'm getting it, and I'm going to be maining on the PS4 Pro because they've got the exclusive content. Um, it's coming out first. The PC port is getting delayed but i am saying when you look at the <laughs> pc version it's a huge leap it's a huge leap so i guess a couple of points on that there which is why i was uh, so flippant in the master race mentality there looking at our podcast here i know that at least three of us are likely to pick up destiny 2 on pc um that being robbie Breyer and, and myself basically I, I don't know if again you might stick to the console but the typical Mental, the typical stereotype that people have been throwing around is that PC players are elitist. They look down on 30 frames per second consoles. You know, they're not helpful. They don't want to interact socially. Well, we, you know, we've got three people here in the podcast, I think, who are in, indicative of that not being true and being something that I think is a negative rumor that, you know, is painting a small portion of the PC community in the same way that there are negative groups on the console community. And personally, I think that. In the same way, when you see PC elitism happen, it should be stamped out. We should be working hard to crush that view that, you know, it's, it's almost like a self-perpetuating mindset that, you know, already before PC gamers have stepped foot into the arena, people are saying, you're going to ruin the game. Mm. You know, there's, there's been no evidence of that whatsoever. All I've seen is people wanting to get involved and play Destiny together. Which yeah, yeah, that's silly people who think, who assume, you know, like, oh, PC elitists, such assholes or whatever. The problem is the minorities are always the loudest you know it just it seems like those people are everyone but they're not <laughs> like here's my thing whether you play on console whether you play on pc doesn't matter enjoy the game and have a good time okay don't spend your time arguing just have fun like everyone should just enjoy the game be <laughs> positive and happy and take it seriously Robbie. like you guys totally aren't right now. <laughs> Robbie Skull, minorities are the loudest. 2017. <laughs> well, they are. <laughs> um, you know, there is there is some some trepidation about the PC elitists, you know, entering this community that's been fairly well curated i feel like yeah you know? i don't think people should view it that, that way though you know what i mean like like everyone needs to just be welcoming and be nice to each other that's yeah. what i want be here's nice. the thing though like even if the pc community ends up being completely toxic how's that affect you if you're playing on a yeah. ps4 it <laughs> doesn't no don't even worry about that that is a completely separate platform let that's me just say point, let me let me just say this as the only minority here and i'm going to try not to be so loud robbie Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. The more power you get on your PC, the more you start to feel like a gaming god. I mean, at the, at the start of the show, Robbie, you were talking about this new graphics card, and you sound pretty proud of it. You sound, And I think that once people get that kind of power and they're able to play everything at 4K and everything at 60 frames or higher, well, it can. It, I'm not, not saying it happens that. to everybody, but I'm saying that a lot of people, it can affect you. If you're talking to a friend who's on a console, the first thing you're going to notice is his game plays like shit because what you have at home is completely uh, different. Okay, so and, I want to address and, that. Yeah, I want to address what you just that. said because I went and I played it on PC. I played a strike. I played a. I played the same mission that I played that I talked about earlier, and then I played about three or four games of PvP. And the whole time, I'm like super impressed. You know, I I can mouse a keyboard like um. Like I'm nearly retarded. Like I, it's real bad. <laughs> In fact, I, today upon returning home, I went and bought two mice that have like a shitload of buttons on them, <laughs> and I'm gonna try out both of them and uh, see, you know, see if I can see if I can uh, get a little bit better because my left hand, I feel like I'm doing gymnastics with it to try and wow. hit all of the buttons. That's so the worst. Try and offload some of that to my right hand. 
so I played a bunch of PC. I did well on the PC. Um, and then I moved over to the PlayStation again to play some more PvP. Um, because PvP is fun. Uh, and most people were playing PvP on the consoles. Because you got to think, Destiny is, as a community, they they know how to play this game on a on a console. Mm-hmm. At no point was I like, I wish we were playing on PC. I was just having fun playing the yeah. game. I was having fun playing the new 4v4 mode with the new weapons, the new abilities. I was having an mm-hmm. absolute blast playing... I did not go back to that PC area after I left it. I stayed in the PS Pro, PS4 Pro area playing PvP for pretty much the rest of the day. I was either playing or watching other people play. And it was exciting. It looked great. It ran smoothly. It was a lot of fun. So- well, l- let me just clarify because I don't think I was able to make my point. I think you guys were, are thinking I was insinuating that all PC players... Uh, adopt this mindset no i think that the very vocal minority of pc players do it doesn't affect everybody but the people who are the pc elitist that you know console gamers speak so frequently about are those people who have that mindset where i'm better than you because i have more powerful hardware than you i'm better than you because i see you playing your ps4 it looks like shit compared to my pc but they but they exist and i think that part of that mindset comes from having the power and not being able to respect the power you think that the power becomes you and and, and people equate a very powerful PC with themselves. And so so a lot of that, them- though, is people just wanting to justify their own purchases, right? They want yeah. to they want to feel like they made the right yeah. decision, that you made the wrong decision because you made a different decision than they did. And when they, when somebody who spent $2,000 on a PC sees somebody having a blast in Uncharted and they can't play it, there's going to be some hurt feelings there, right? Yeah, songs. Yeah. Yeah. And let's be absolutely clear as well. The other thing that I wanted to dispel or use this as a platform to dispel the myth of is that you have to spend two thousand dollars on a PC to play Destiny Two no, or other first person shooters. Not so, necessarily, but I mean, yeah. Briar, I know that you're looking at uh, potentially maybe putting out some support to help people that are thinking of making PCs, but there's been um, posts that I've seen on Reddit for for Destiny and other places that people people that know far more about us than than PCs have done like a, a comparable parts for what they think a first person shooter of that sort of graphics would need to do 1080p 60 and they're coming up at around 400 to 450 dollars with if you're looking at a 1080p 60 hertz monitor you can pick that up for maybe 70 80 dollars so for around the price of a ps4 pro maybe a you know, hundred dollar change there you've got something that can do destiny at 60 frames per second at 1080p mm-hmm. granted it can't do 4k but the other argument you hear is people saying, I won't buy a PC for one game. I think that's really narrow-minded because, yes, they've built it for one game, but that's not the only game it'll ever play. You know, you've got free-to-play Absolutely. games like League of Legends, um, Heroes of the, of the Ancients. Paladins. Yeah, lots of free-to-play games. Steam Library becomes available to you. There's lots of things that you can do and get into for a very Console low entry gamers, price. I, I feel like don't understand the concept of the Steam sale. <laughs> like, it yeah. is... A fucking bonanza. <laughs> it's like, amazing. Oh, yeah, God. It is. It's, there's nothing like I, Although Sony, I think, does a pretty good job every once in a while doing like a, a pretty deep discounted Flash sale. Sales, yeah. 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 But when Steam sales come around, you buy 15 games. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, my you know, God. And you spend there's 20 just, bucks on like, yeah. like the whole Two, lot of them. Did, Three, five, so right. ten dollars. So from my so perspective, cheap. I feel like it's something that. It's almost like the PC needs, or the PC and the console gamers need to learn a lot from each other. One being not to worry about you holding a crispy 60 frames at all times and you having to have all these resolutions and settings and spend more time tweaking your games than playing them, which is, I guess, the the, the pitfall of the PC. And then from a console side, not thinking that there's a big gulf and that PC gamers are all people throwing money at the screen because you really don't need to be. You know, for a shoestring budget, you can play PC games at medium graphics at 60 frames per second, yeah. 1080p. You just got to be smart about it, too, especially if you're building your own computer. Do your research. It's very important. Just yeah. know what you're building and know what you want and what your price range is. It's like anything. you got to set goals. And it's even like, God, in real life when you're, you know. Well, let me, let me just say this, right? I, I never really was a PC guy. I, and this is the first powerful PC I ever bought. And I bought it mostly for editing, but I wanted something that could play games. I did a lot of research. The Asus, Asus UX501, I'll never forget that because I Google it so many times and watch reviews. This thing has a G, G, GeForce GTX 960M in it. And by today's standards, it's a dinosaur. And I bought it last year. 
And I, maybe last year it was the wrong time to buy it. But when I did buy it, for everything that I do, uh, rendering videos, doing editing, and playing games, I can play a lot of games at 1080p. But like when I see everything that's going on now, I feel like I can just pick this thing up and throw it in the trash because I feel like it's a waste of time. You know, PC, it just changes so much. Something that's powerful today, next year, it's going to be completely outshined by something new. The, there is an issue with buying a laptop for gaming. I mean, it's, it is yeah. a, it is yeah. less of a value. That, yeah. It's a less of a value proposition because you, you, you are buying, you're paying more money for portability. You're paying more money for parts that aren't necessarily as good as you get in an equivalent desktop, right? And you, totally. can't, you can't upgrade it like you could with a desktop. So there yeah. are issues with that. I will say this, that once you do get a PC, there are a ton of games you can get. And even with your 960M in that graphics card, that graphics card you have, you said you were able to play a brand new game, Player Unknown Battleground. Yeah. So, you know, like... It played great. <laughs> You could probably play Destiny too. I would. I, played, uh, I played it. I played Player Unknown Battlegrounds in high settings, Brian. Yeah. So I mean, oh, there you go. There you go. But I still feel like shit because who who plays with a 960M? It's like my grandma has one of those now. I guess look into the future as well <laughs> to sort of go round after. off our, our Destiny two discussion, Brian. You've been there. You've seen it. You've been immersed in it. So I'm I'm trying to think about. I guess the focus of Destiny 2 doesn't appear to be competitive PvP um, for various reasons that we're not going to get into deep, but there, there just isn't the infrastructure there at launch to make you feel that this is going the way of competitive PvP. However, the game does feel like it's going to directly challenge the Borderlands Looter Shooter Crown as the premier title that, that fills that niche. And the only thing I can think that's something close to it at the moment is The Division, and that's a game that I guess is on the way out rather than on the way up, at least in its present iteration. So my question is, the Borderlands is a game that really found its feet on PC, and whilst it's, you know, it was a console game, and Borderlands 2 was big on console, it felt like the PC embraced Borderlands and really played it to death and made it what it was in the future. Do you feel like Destiny 2 coming to PC in the guise of a looter shooter is going to become something far greater than it ever was on a console? I hope mm. so. Uh <clears throat> I don't. I don't actually know how to address that question. To be honest with you, that's tricky. <laughs> Let me just say this. Let me just say this, guys. And I haven't really talked to him about it. But Borderlands Two is really the only game that my 15 year old son plays to this day. He's playing on this PC. morning. Whoa. No, he's PC? playing on PS PS4. Okay. You know, he plays with his friends and stuff. But that's all he plays. Shout out, Brandon. What's up? But that's all he plays. And he still loves it. He has Destiny and a whole bunch of other games. But he spends so much time in that game because of all the stuff that he finds. So if Destiny 2 is going in that direction, it, uh, it might be a hard battle to dethrone, dethrone, uh, to dethrone that game. The build I played of Destiny 2 didn't have much of what we expect to see. It didn't have any kind of uh, you know economy in it whatsoever. We didn't get Engram mm -hmm. drops. We didn't get. We, we didn't make money. We didn't. We played a very base version of the game. All we got to do was shoot guns at stuff. Gotcha. That's apparently a couple months old too. I've also heard as well. Yeah, there's, you know, that's what I had heard too at the event, and then uh, I guess there was some statement put out by Bungie on their podcast that it was only one to two weeks old. So I don't oh. really know about that. Hmm. Okay. That's a, I mean, it's tough to say, Gary. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. I think you know. I'm hoping that the success of Destiny and before that Borderlands and even at the division to some extent mm -hmm. kind of increases the amount of competition for these games, you know, like yeah. Activision in their most recent earning <laughs> earnings report said that the player engagement rate for destiny was the highest they'd ever seen in any game. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Um, Seriously. Yeah. So that's, that's appealing because when you have high player engagement, you've got a built in audience for a sequel, obviously, You've also got mm. people buy, doing the microtransactions, and you know you got a community supporting players in the game and promoting the game. Um, so there's a lot of value there, and other companies are going to see that, and they're going to want a piece of that pie. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, what Borderlands Three looks like in a post Destiny world. Yeah, I mean, that's, that was my question. It's just because I guess the, the similarities between PC and console players are probably less pronounced in most places, but for me the mannerisms and the characteristics of how they approach their games are very different. So console yeah. gamers like to be entertained with a strong story 
They like a good narrative. They like a game that they can get immersed in with a cinematic kind of feel. PC gamers just want to grind the shit out of something for 5,000 hours. Yeah. You know, that if you look at things that are popular on PC, totally. things like Diablo, League of Legends, just grind, just grind, 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 get in there and grind. Yeah. So for me, I don't know if Destiny is gearing itself and changing its trajectory towards a PvE-centric game with a really strong grind element. I just wonder whether or not it is really catching lightning in a bottle with a PC port. And I'm not thinking from a comp PvP side or 60 frames. I really don't care about those elements. They're not important yeah. as such. It kind of seems the, like the right kind of game for PC, doesn't it? It really does game, to me. The gameplay loop is kind of thing. So that was what I was kind of trying to pick out there. You know, in my opinion, Destiny has become less of a grind fest than it was at launch. You know, when mm. we first landed in the Destiny world, you had to grind your ass off to get anything. You really you, did. You it finally was so got a legendary. Slow. You finally got a legendary Engram, and you brought it to the Cryptarch, and he'd give you a you blue a item for it. <laughs> you had people. Yes, I remember you that. You had people running circles in the Cosmodrome trying to get spin metal to upgrade their weapons and armor. They've pulled back on the grind element a lot. And Gary, I think I agree with what you said. PC players are much more into that grind. You know, they're more used to games like world of warcraft or diablo like you mentioned that are a big grind and they value that grind because it's, it represents value right it's like yeah yeah you know spending Absolutely, that time yeah. in that game represents value so i wonder i wonder how they like those kind of economies will work in destiny 2 because they've they have pulled back hard on the grind of destiny and mm -hmm. i wonder what it'll look like that's a good question i don't i don't know how that'll work there yeah. none of that stuff was in the build we played we didn't, never saw an Engram drop, never saw Glimmer. We never, we have no idea. We couldn't even go into those menus. Mm, awesome. Well, I had a, a quick fire question for each member of us here to round off before the news on Destiny 2. And I guess it's what would be your biggest personal wish for Destiny 2 post launch to keep you playing? Because, Brian, you're the only guy, well, I guess I've played it for two something, 2000 something hours, but. I already got my answer. Most, Briar, Briar most already answered have, that. Most of us here have bounced off Destiny, uh, bounced back and bounced off. What would keep you all playing? So basically, I guess you, you said you got your answer. What would, what would keep you playing Destiny 2? You know, I didn't have all the details, and thank God we have such a, a well-informed co-host, Briar. Uh, my question would have been, well, the thing that I would have wanted to have, apparently we do have, and that's a way for people who don't have teams or they, they're not a part of a group for them to be able to go out and do strikes or go out and, 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 and do different things in Destiny 2 that require maybe six or seven people to play. Uh, that was my major issue with Destiny 1. You know, I couldn't find anybody to play with. We had to go to LFG groups and go, you know, go to our computer trying to find people and trying to coordinate. And the fact that they've actually included that in the game uh, and, and then kind of added in a social way. So you can actually look at these groups and see who you actually want to play with. To me, that's really the only thing that I would have asked for. I love the whole aspect of, you know, finding loot, finding weapons and upgrading and all that stuff throughout the Destiny world. But the stuff that I really wanted was the stuff that I couldn't get because I was unable to do many of the, the aspects of Destiny 1 because I didn't have a whole team of people to play with me. And it was really hard to – to me, it was a, a lot of extra work to find those groups. You know, so the fact that they've, they've added that – there's a clan called the Milky Sterloins that would be happy to have you. I'm sure they would, Briar. They're very milky. I'm sure they would. <laughs> Which you can take so, that over where you want. Robbie, what are you uh what are you looking for? What, <laughs> what, what, what the hell that means, Robbie? <laughs> what would keep what would keep Robbie Skull playing Destiny right the way through twenty eighteen? So the thing about Destiny for me is I think the core shooting and the core game is fantastic. It's just got the potential to be a ton of fun, you know, very addicting. For me, my issue with Destiny is just that there's not enough interesting content. Like the PvE stuff, you know, you play the same strikes over and over and over again, and that's fine, but the problem is it just doesn't feel like there's a reason to do it for me. Like eventually it's just like, what's the point? So for Destiny 2, I want them to create content that's compelling, but not only compelling, but has a reason to keep playing. Like that all sort of adds up together. And it feels like this one big thing where it's like, okay, I always feel like there's something exciting to do, and it's compelling me to come back. Robbie, I don't, I don't know if you'll be satisfied or not. Um, from what I understand, is there will be, there will be more things to do in Destiny Two than there were in Destiny One. Mm -hmm. Like there, the 
they they mentioned that the European Dead Zone, the new patrol zone, will be twice as big as anything that was in Destiny One. Right? That's not even the excitement to and me it, about that. It's more just there's stuff to do. It'll be filled with stuff to do. There'll be yeah. you know things to explore. There'll be you know, little mini dungeons that are hidden around that area with loot in them, right? But I also do think that the there will be a repetitive nature to Destiny Two. You will still I think be that, grinding yeah, that's strikes, part of what which is, is okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that because I like some of the grind, but it's just it's yeah. got to have at least a bit of compelling things in it. Yeah. So, and if they to add to what Robbie said, if they were able to add maybe more compelling dailies and weeklies, you know, those type of things that you say, oh, "Wow, I've never seen this before." You know, I've never done anything like this before to kind of breathe new life into the game. You know, after you beat the game, it's going to start to become kind of comp- I mean, kind of repetitive, Robbie. That's really what Destiny is all about, you know, at its core. You go out and do the same things over and over again. But for me to be able to find people to do raids with and do strikes with, you know, and do those kind of big events, those are more meaningful. And to me, that's the part of Destiny I missed. You know, for all the stuff that I paid for, I probably only went through maybe two or maybe three raids the entire time I played that game. And I feel like that was the thing that I really wanted to do the most, but I never had the opportunity because I couldn't really get with people. So hopefully, I mean, I think it'll be good. I think the game will be good. Hell Especially yeah! I mean, I'm. Now. I and gotta it's... tell you, as so exciting as it all sounds, I am still a little bit skeptical of all the PVE stuff. Because you know what's easy to say? Oh, we have so many activities. Oh, the world's so much bigger. I feel like I've heard this before, and it sounds great. I am gonna kind of wait and see on that. Do you, you, know you guys I mean? think it's? Do you guys yeah. think it's possible that? Whatever the new tower type of area is, that they have things for the players to actually Let's, get involved in. Do can you? Just put a comma on that question. Just hold that question sure. for a second. Sure. So, Gary, because I want to hear Gary answer his own question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Gary. That's cool. Um, I guess for myself, what would keep me playing is partly to address Robbie's concern, and that is re- something end game that is PvE focused, because I think PvP is PvP in Destiny. It's fun. It's what it is. But for me, it's mm-hmm. PvE that is something that you can replay day in, day out that isn't a strike. So whether that's right. procedurally generated dungeons, lost sectors, which I'm hoping is going to be that, awesome. something that you step into and is a different event with different enemies coming from different locations and different objectives. And Division did something very similar to this with Underground. It was executed poorly, but it still was a concept. And Diablo has done, I guess, that perfectly with Greater Rifts. It's possible. You know, It's something that can be done. And for me, if I could hop into Destiny and have something that progressed my character and moved towards an end goal, so I had long-term progression in addition to short-term attainable progression with something that was dynamic and evolving that wasn't the same strikes, that would keep me coming back because then if I felt I burnt out on PvP or I wasn't enjoying the meta, I could still hop on with friends and have maybe an hour or two's fun and that yeah, would be awesome. enough for me that day. Yeah, I, I would love That's... to see that too, Gary. So, well, like Almost like a horde mode or something, but it, it, ha- it has to be a little bit different every time you play it, right? Yeah. Different enemies from different spawn locations, just so it didn't feel like the same repetitive thing every time you did it. Well, for me, if there was like totally. five or six different scenarios, so maybe one being, let's say, protect protect the, the ghost, second being rescue the hostage, third being escort the VIP, yeah. lots of different scenarios, and then that can happen in one of five different themed locations, so it can be a Vex theme, Cabal theme, something else theme, and then the enemies can spawn in different ways, and the, the level geometry is procedurally generated, so the corridors oh. appear in different ways. That's all they need, that's all they need, Brian, oh, that right there awesome. is perfect. That's so, you know, all they need. And the longer it's you stri- last, the better your loot. Oh, man. <laughs> Ooh, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, you're, Gary, you yeah. just from, nailed it, man. You, you know, nailed from, it, Gary. From zero to 100, and however far you get in it, you get checkpoints. And if you get to 100, you get the best loot. But if you die at 40% complete, you still get some loot, but it's just not as good. That's and that, to awesome. Me, yeah. that would be that, so it's, not Bert, it's, it's not that happening. It's not happening, That would keep guys. everybody. It's, it's not happening. That's not such... Happening. That's that would keep everybody uh, entertained with Destiny Two, and, and it seems like such a no-brainer. But God, that would be incredible, and everybody would love that. Man, it would be a lot of fun. Even if I, I'd be on board, even if it wasn't, even if the geometry wasn't procedurally gener- generated, even if it was the same geometry every time, but the fight felt different because different enemies were spawning in from different locations at different times, and it was progressively more difficult with no clear endpoint. Right, it's like yeah. you just kept going until you eventually had to fail. But whenever you did fail, that was the basis of the loot that you got at the end. Right, is the yeah. be- better you did, 
the better your loot. So it, there was a reason to go in there and do it over and over again to try and get better yeah. and improve and last longer. That'd be That's amazing. So you know, the, the funny thing is, right, Gary, his idea got me super excited about something that potentially will never happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting there smiling yes. like, oh, this is going to be incredible. And more than likely, it won't happen. Right. Uh, Lost Sector is going to be scanning a stockpile of ghosts and moving on and getting some glimmer. That's all it is. Trust me. It's done. <laughs> oh, no. You guys think that wherever the, uh, I guess, the community area is, kind of like the tower in Destiny 2, will have anything for players to do. That was something that a lot of players talked about, myself included, in Destiny 1, mm. that maybe a game area where you could go and do something or play some air hockey or throw basketball or do something besides go out and shoot. Even put a tetherball uh, court in the middle of it. But what what do you kind guys of thing would you want? I don't know. I mean, it, it could be some social type of gathering or some, some something fun. You know, there's plenty, there's plenty Spice of types. Gwent. Yeah, right. Spice, Spice oh, Gwent. He but, said something um, fun, Gary. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there's plenty. You guys, Screw let, you us guys, know. Man. Screw you guys let us know in the comments what would be a good game or a good activity to have in a tower like environment in Destiny. You know, if you could like interface with another player from, you know, another part of the world and all of a sudden you go to one side of a table, he goes to the other side and the perspective changes and you guys are playing air hockey or doing something. Do you think it's possible they could do that? To, to me, that'd be a good idea. I mean, well, just to give players an something. Important point. Uh, I totally forgot about this too. In the one of the trailers at the reveal, there was actually Guardians playing soccer. Did you guys remember that? Yeah. Well, there's a soccer yeah, ball. There was. So there's a soccer ball in the to... tower now. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah a, but it's now there's chase. actual goals and stuff though. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Well, I'm excited. I'm. I'm actually. I was feeling a lot more down at the beginning of the show mm -hmm. about. Destiny 2, but after talking to you guys and hearing your perspective on it, Briar, and hearing that the game is so much grander than uh, I'm the original, hyped. you know, just hearing the way that you described that, that there's gigantic, you know, beings with rotary arms that are smashing through the ground, and like when you look off into the distance, it just seems, you know, there's so much more going on. I'm, I'm really anxious to see that myself in person, so. Yeah. And what's keeping yeah. Briar playing, then what's going to be his one need apart from Food on the briar table. What? What is it? What are we doing? Why are we playing? I want regular content updates. I want, I want a return to the content that we saw in year one of Vanilla Destiny. I want regular DLCs. I want to know a schedule ahead of time. I want to be able to look forward to uh, the first Osiris DLC, which we already know is coming, and the Warmind DLC, which we know is coming. And when that is all happening, I want to know that the next the next DLC is on the way. And I want to know that Activision and Bungie have a plan and that they can sustain that plan, that they have built Destiny 2 with this in mind and that they know they can actually create content on a regular basis to keep the community playing Destiny 2 because that was, to me, the biggest failure of Destiny 1 is that they, they could not maintain the pace that they set up in year one. And that was a failure of uh bungie in a huge way right totally nice it was like every three or three or four months back then wasn't it wasn't it Brian? originally but i mean those were rush dlcs and you could tell yeah. yeah they honestly weren't that great there were good moments in between but well, not so that great. 75 percent of us have said we want compelling continuous feed of end game content that's 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 telling in itself yeah there you go awesome awesome what news have we got? Yeah. Apart from Destiny. News me, baby. All right. Let's start it, Robbie. <laughs> There's not a ton of news this week, but there is some good stuff here and there. All right, guys. Ubisoft has confirmed three yet to be announced AAA games that will be released by March 31st of 2018, the end of the fiscal year. They include a new Assassin's Creed game, Far Cry 5, which is the confirmed title, and The Ooh. Crew 2. Which that last one I just don't give a shit about. The first two are pretty Do you pretty guys great, know though. that the crew actually has a really loyal community? Like, people love yes. that fucking game. I didn't know I that. Have, I yeah. I was, I, I was listening to the Waypoint podcast on the way home on the plane. And uh, they were talking about how they had, they had met. Like, you know, they had run into this. There's a, there is a crew community. A game that really wasn't that well received critically has, like, a real fan base to it. I can relate wow. to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this sounds familiar. But yeah, I mean, uh, for me, Assassin's Creed, not surprising. That's been leaked all over the place. That'll be enough to D3, no doubt. 
Far Cry 5, a little more surprising to me because we have heard rumors that it's going to be Spaghetti Western, which I don't think that's true. I think that's just kind of... At this point, Robbie, you got time with... Yeah. You got to leave the door open for Far Cry because they've done so much craziness with Far Cry at this point. Far Cry Primal. They really have. Blood I mean, Dragon. Really, Primal, they, yeah. they can do anything they want with Far Cry. And they're spitting these games out like every year, too. So, you know, I think that I think that Far Cry is becoming like an annual thing, isn't it? Almost annual. It's like every one and a half to two years. It's, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really uh, interested to, to know when the next Assassin, Assassin's Creed game comes out that I actually am excited about. Or I just if, can't. if there ever will be one. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> will there ever be another <laughs> <It's> good one? <laughs> every time I hear that name, it's like I just go, whatever. Yeah, there, to me, there's actually a difference between a good Assassin's Creed that comes out and one a good Assassin's Creed game that I'm actually interested in. Those are two different things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. I've played a lot of fucking Assassin's Creed at this point, and it doesn't really excite me like it used to. Mm. It's just boring now. Yeah, It might just think... be time for a reboot. I don't know. I think for Assassin's Creed to work now, they, they almost need to just ditch the whole future past element to it. Because I think at this point here, the Abstergo kind of travels to the future and walk around an apartment block or whatever the hell it is, an office building. It's kind of played out. You know, people know that that, is, that was great on the first and second game when it was really unique and you were still unraveling this sort of deep bureaucratic right. mystery. But now you really just care about jumping off rooftops and being an assassin. That's, Landing that's, in the hay. Yeah. yeah. That's the gameplay hook for me. So... I don't know. And maybe if they double down on the assassin side of things, then it, it could work. I, I just, for me to play a single player open world adventure game, it needs to be a very, very good one. It needs to be better than The Witcher 3. Let's use the Briar benchmark. It's got to be really well executed and thought out. And the fact that they're taking a lot more time on this game, because this is supposedly being made by the Black Flag team. So by the time this game. comes out, it'll be four years of development, which is quite a bit, especially if it's a big team. That is yeah. significant. So well, they Flag heard all. They, game. Yeah, and I love Black Flag. Yeah, loved it. So that also makes me more excited for this one because I know it's a good team. But yeah. Okay, so Ubisoft has announced their E3 2017, 2017 press conference will be held on June 12th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern time. You guys expecting anything good out of Ubisoft other than what we just heard? Well, I mean, I'd like them to come out probably have say, shocker at the end, right? They'll probably have some big yeah. IP they announce as usual. So. Well, they're, they're not taken over at the moment by Vivendi, which is nice. You know, the, 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 <laughs> that should be the game. Like, the the Vivendi game. Yeah. PS4, so, you know, Xbox One. Video game tycoon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, I, I don't really know. I mean, show, tell me about the game. Don't tell me like, about the press conference. You know, like, that's... I don't really care, like, when the press conference is or... Right. You know, that they, they have an unannounced title. I want to know what the unannounced title is. I want to know about the title. That's the news okay. to me, you know? Yeah. I guess right. the, news, the news from a speculation perspective then is do we think it's early enough or do we think it's too early, wrong way around, to see The Division 2 announced? No, it's not too early. <laughs> That's too early, yeah. No, I, I don't think it's too early. Really? You know? No. I hmm. think they can, they can do a lot of things right with The Division that they screwed up on in the original. They already got they the engine. They announced that game two years before it came out, didn't they? I yeah. Think. At E3? Yep. Yeah, they did. You're right. It was a long time. Let me see. E3 2013 it was announced. 2014. Because there's no plans to support Div The reason I say that is that there was originally plans. It came out two and a half years after it was announced. Almost three. There was originally plans to support yeah. the division into year two of content. So after the first year season passed, there was a plan to have uh, a, a full second year. And then... The Massive and Ubisoft did the press announcement and they said that they're going to be supporting Division in year two with free content updates and the kind of the community lost their shit, which kind of leads me to believe that they've kind of dropped support for Division one on the view to developing the franchise because Ubisoft is still maintaining that there is a franchise in Division and it mm -hmm. wasn't a one off game. So and they're making a movie on that, too, correct? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So do we think we'll see it? I would like to see uh. it. I don't know if we will. All right, so this little bit of news is the last on our list because we had a lot of Destiny stuff, but we kind of hit all those uh, check marks. This news came out earlier in the week, and there was a lot of speculation on it, uh, but now there is a definitive answer. Microsoft has renewed its trademark for the canceled Xbox One exclusive game Scalebound. So a lot of people were excited that and thinking that Scalebound was still in development and that they were going to actually make this game, and it was going to be an E3 announcement. Did we already know this wasn't coming out? I thought they already canceled this. They did cancel it, but they, but they renewed the trademark, the trademark, which is why people were like, huh? 
And so people yeah. were like, oh, they're still going to work on it. But Microsoft made an announcement, I think the day before yesterday, that they were just holding on to their trademark rather than letting it just go to the wayside. And it, they had no plans of making scale bound. So, well, I yeah. honestly, when I saw that, I was like, they're probably just holding on to the trademark. They're not going to announce this already again. That was my thoughts on it. So, I think Microsoft's are scraping the barrel with games, though. They need IPs and they need exclusives. E3 is yeah. going to be a big deal, Gary. I think that Phil Spencer is serious when he, he keeps saying this E3 is going to be all about games. We know they already got the hardware. They got that part covered. But he keeps saying repeatedly that this E3 is going to be all about games. I think they're probably going to try to take a page from Sony's playbook here and come out with game after game after game after game. And if they do that, it's going to be, it's going to be a pretty exciting uh, press conference. Well, let's see it because I haven't got the smallest clue as to what, what those they games have. could be. Yeah, right? Like, I don't I don't see a path forward for the Scorpio unless they do exactly what you're saying, Beastly, is do That's the only press way. conference that's got fucking new game, new game, new game, new game. Because yeah. that is the failing of the Xbox. What is there? There's no fucking reason to play it. Yeah. You, you, you're you totally said, right. You guys are absolutely uh, right on that. Like said, we yeah. said, we're all excited for Scorpio. Who cares about it, though, if there's no compelling games to play on? Like, I don't care. You know, yeah. I uh, I slipped Sorry. one more tiny bit of news into the feed, like a, a roofie into all your drinks, and that I'm is glad you a, did, Gary. that is <laughs> Call of Duty World War Two oh, yeah. could be coming to the Nintendo Switch after all. Did you guys see that? No. no. Yes, and I'm glad you included this because I forgot about it. Thank you. Beanox, who are a development team for Activision and have recently ported some of their games, some of the Call of Duty games was seen talking to a Canadian military squad, one of them wearing a Call of Duty World War II Nintendo t-shirt, and have not denied rumours that they are working on a port of Call of Duty World War II for the Switch. What wow. do we think about it? Do we think it's going to happen? <laughs> I hope. That would be awesome, man. Um, oh. I think so, because Activision did the same thing with the Wii U when it came out. They released Black Ops 2, and they also released Ghosts. So, who knows? Like, even if it's not quite up to spec with the you know PS4 Xbox One version. It would have to be almost a completely different game. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm wondering too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily need to be if it was again a game that had all the particle effects stripped down and then was playing yeah. at let's say 540p yeah. upscaled to 720p. Well, no, I mean, it would probably look all right on a handheld because that's predominantly where you're doing it. But and, here's the uh, thing: imagine playing. A true Call of Duty game, regardless of how it looks graphically, if it's the same game on the go, and it's yeah. at sixty frames per second, and you can take it anywhere, yeah, that's and everybody amazing. you play against is on Wi-Fi on a fucking bus somewhere. No, no. <laughs> okay, that's less amazing. I'm Great. thinking about it from a sink <laughs> first, from <Right>. a <laughs> Somebody's playing on McDonald's Wi-Fi. It's like, what the hell? This guy's literally, jumping all over they're the place. literally on McDonald's Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, from a, from a single player campaign perspective, I can see this being It'd be awesome, yeah. quite good. You know, because it's it's nice to take games on the go. And I mean, the the story is corroborated to a to an extent by the fact you can now link your Call of Duty account to your Nintendo account on their website again, which is something that you hadn't seen since uh, since Ghosts. Oh wow! So. Uh, maybe you know it's not wild speculation to think that this is going to happen especially with how popular the switch has been and yeah. activision's desire to support it at least with their first call of duty franchise and this would give a lot more people reason you know to bring their switches out and play them again you know I once you get done you, with Legend if this of Zelda. is true and it's a good port this might push me to get a switch at the end really? of the year this just might do it yeah if it's good if it's the legend really of zelda good, reason then, oh you got that on the wii u all right robbie come exactly. on exactly come on Realistically, you're gonna buy the Switch version of Call of Duty World War Two over the PS4 or Xbox version. No, I'm getting them both. Yeah, you know, Robbie, Why would you, you get fuck them both? around. Because you have the true, you know, PS4 version with the content, and then you can play it on the go as well. Are you gonna play? What are you gonna play on the go? Are you gonna play the campaign again? Or multiplayer? That's gonna be a fucking hell ride. You're not going to want to play multiplayer on the Switch. I can tell you right now. It's going to be awful. That, that console, you can... You, yeah. Everybody's yeah. on Wi-Fi on that thing. Robbie I just really hope it's going to be good. I really hope they do it right. I'm sorry. I just All really I can say is, to. if you want to play Call of Duty on the go, you can do it already with the Vita. 
So there you yeah. go. <laughs> oh my of. god, have fun with that. Bring <laughs> <laughs> <Just laughs> out a touch pad for yeah. grenades and melee and weird stuff. That, that of course, right. a sprint too. I guess it's uh, weird. You know, zombies. I guess would be an okay experience on the go, right? Yeah, that would. Be yeah. awesome. Yeah, so, solo, solo zombies would work, even if you're not playing it cooperatively. Yeah, that'd be quite fun. All right. Now that I think that about zombies, a lot of people just like to play zombies, and that'd be oh. actually a pretty fun thing to bring with you. Yeah, and the campaign. I mean, if you think, you know, the flight that you've just recently had prior to LA, what five hours was that on the on the plane? I if am you'd not imagine... a fan of Call of Duty campaigns. <laughs> oh. I mean, it's it's something that you know. If I'm going away and I've I've got ten hours to to play a game or eleven hours to play it, and I want to pick up Call of Duty. I mean, I don't know. Isn't it to me that's a more interesting proposition than Call of Duty on the Scorpio or the PS4 Pro. I'd rather have. Call of Duty on a portable console than a 4K console. It might mm. just be our viewpoints are different on this one because when I think of Call of Duty, I just think of the multiplayer. Well, that's why I buy. That's why I buy Call of Duty. I could care less about the campaign. I've not cared for Call of Duty campaigns for a very long time, and sure I'm not enough. a zombies player either. So it just makes like all those things. That mm. So it's just different. that's just me though. Yeah, are are you telling me, taste. brother, that you don't want to play the World War II campaign? It looks like it might be interesting, man. Back in hey, Give man, it a shot. Everybody told me that Infinite Warfare had an awesome campaign, and I got into it, and it felt like Call of Duty. Yeah. And I don't like Call of Duty campaigns. Like, they're very like boring to me. Oh, shit. I mean, aside from things you don't like, what are you going to be playing this week that you do like, Briar? What are you up well, to this week? Well, now you're playing Destiny 2, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to rehab. I am I, I'm super addicted to Player Unknown's Battleground. That's what I'm going to be playing this week. I will be playing Destiny as well. Uh, I'm going to be streaming both, too, because as we lead into Destiny 2, uh, I don't I don't want to burn myself out on Destiny. I want to I want to be mixing some other games in there. And Player Unknown's Battleground right now, I am super passionate about. I enjoy every game I have in there. Uh, I was, Before the show, I was playing with Wilson, and we were laughing and giggling the whole time. It's just a fun game to play with friends, uh, and mm -hmm. I'm very addicted to it right now. Uh, I want to get a group of us four playing that game ASAP, as soon as possible. Okay. I'll buy it tonight. Uh, it's $30. It is super fun. I'll go buy it as soon as it's, it's up, better with done. friends. The game is better with friends. You can play it alone, too. Uh, and it's, it's almost like a horror game when you play it alone, I find. But yeah, it's it like, is more just like fun sex. with friends. Just like sex. I think you're doing it wrong, Beastly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why would sex... Oh, no. We might oh, want to have a talk you. after the show. Probably when you do it wrong. Well. a little talk with Beastly. Be like, hold on now. You need to loosen your grip, Beastly. You yeah. Really yeah if sex is a I don't know, I don't know how... need to show you how to do it right. I don't know how masturbation is a horrible a <laughs> horror game. It's a horror game. Like a vice grip there in the screen. Um, basically, what are you doing You're this just week? Choking that thing. This no week, wonder it's a horror game to you. <laughs> I don't want to claim it, damn it. I'm going to be playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds with you guys. Brian, oh, let yeah. me know. Let's winner, winner, chicken dinner, it, basically. Game I want to play this week. That's that's all I'm concerned with. I'll also be working on my new uh, chat with Beastly videos and getting those finished rendering. God, they're taking forever, but I'm so proud of the work. And that'll be my week, man. Uh, hopefully, we can get on Player Unknown soon because I played about three matches and I got my ass handed to me. Didn't know where the wall was. I ended up walking outside of the wall, and my life slowly started draining away. And I was looking at the map, and I was like, where do I need to go? And I couldn't tell. I ended up just fucking dying in the middle of the woods. So uh, That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now that I have Briar with me, I'll, I'll at least know what I'm doing. I died today, Beastly, when I jumped out of a car too soon, and I hit a tree. <laughs> like I, was trying to, I was trying to exit the car. And the car drove past the tree, but my body hit that tree directly. <laughs> oh my god! Over and died. <laughs> I, the very the second game I played, there was a, a yellow car. I didn't even know people could drive cars yet. Yeah. And I was like walking through like this little swamp area, and this car was coming toward me. And I panicked my ass off. I'm pushing every button trying to lay down. They ran straight over me. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what button to push. I was trying to hide, and they saw me. And the cars go fast in this game too. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to getting some practice in. Just let me know when you're going to have some free time, Brian. I know you're a busy man. I, I'm going to have some free time tomorrow. Let's okay. plan on playing tomorrow. Is everybody good with that? I yep. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, well, after the show, let's do two minutes of just playing in that. After right. the show. I got nothing going on tomorrow, so I'm good. Okay. Robbie, what, 
what are you doing this week aside from all sorts of new adult websites with your graphics card? Oh man! Oh, can't wait. Pull uh, my anyway. <laughs> real, real fast on that card. Those titties look like they're in 4K. Thanks, bro. Oh my god, those titties are so smooth across the screen. I want that graphics card back. <laughs> 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 too bad, Briar. I'm keeping it. I'm enjoying it way too much. <laughs> it's almost horrific. <laughs> what about you, um, Greg? What are you doing? Well, we haven't found out what Robbie's doing aside from. Nasty. That. Oh, I'll 37. Okay. Wanted to, yeah, I wanted to see what I would be doing. I, that wasn't going to be it. <laughs> Anyways, um, definitely I'll be playing a lot more PC. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm already looking into getting like a gaming keyboard and gaming mouse. Like I'm, I'm getting serious about this thing. So uh, what's happening uh, to us? Already found it's... some good deals online. Like I'm ready to already order a gaming keyboard. So, Just uh, be aware. Either a Razer light... or a uh, HP. Or if it HP, lights up uh, in multiple colors, it will give you a higher KD in first-person shooters. So you need as many it lights as, as possible. No. <laughs> yeah, but it'll be Don't double the that. price. <laughs> Don't worry, man. The more lights, the more kills you'll get. Just need lots of lights. RGB everywhere. It's fine. Sold. Sold. Um, um, yeah, and for myself, I am going to be <laughs> obviously pub PUBG with you guys um, as and when. A little bit of Destiny because I don't know. Destiny 2's wet my whistle to go back in and play a little bit more of that. So I'll be doing that and, and obviously finishing my foray into the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy. So hoping to get onto 13 2 and have some comments for you uh, very briefly next week on that. So that's it for me. Somebody right. in the chat said we will the milking stream. game is what's selling the Switch. <laughs> we will stream <laughs> PUBG, milk. guys. So watch for that. We'll get the Beastly Thoughts crew doing PUBG and we'll stream that and have a good time. Uh, all together, I think that'll be a really fun stream. And uh, get ready, baby, it'll be good. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the show. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and Podbean. Podbean, depending on where your podcast selector of choice resides. Uh, and Google. if you can and you see fit, please do leave us a review because not only do we read them and it makes us feel very good about ourselves, which we need. We have Sometimes. very small egos, we have <laughs> tiny, tiny little egos, big, massive cocks, but small egos. And <laughs> the, egos, the egos can only be propped up with positive reviews. So every review you give me, I promise you, it will, it will make me feel just that little bit more worthwhile in the day. So. Oh, gosh, Gary. I'm like what Gary said, but exactly reversed. Huge ego. <laughs> Very Venus. small cock. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Funny. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> you poor baby. <laughs> Sad. Sad about it. All right, it. guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you. Well, we'll see you tomorrow when we play uh, some PUBG right here on uh, the Briar Rabbit Twitch channel. Take care and have a great day. I've lost right, I think, OBS. I think, I think he gone. shut you off. You lost it. I lost it. It's gone. All right. Can we stop our audacities? Okay, I'm stopping mine on the count of yep, three. One, stopped. two, three. Stopped. Okay, I'm going to uh, export.